Hey guys, my name is Dice Roland. Today we're going to be taking a look at some facts you didn't know about the cult classic that created a trilogy and a TV series. Written and directed by Sam Raimi, The Evil Dead is about a group of college students who take a trip to an old cabin in the woods. There, they find some mysterious items through which they unwittingly unleash demonic forces. Now, they have to do whatever they can to survive until dawn. So without further ado, let's dig up The Evil Dead. The scene at the beginning of the film where the presence flies over the water was created by Sam Raimi filming in a dinghy while Bruce Campbell pushed him. As far as the other evil POV shots are concerned, they were achieved with the camera mounted to a 2x4 with someone on either side holding it up. Ash's Oldsmobile was Sam Raimi's own, and has appeared in several of his later films, including the other two Evil Dead films, The Gift, the Spider-Man movies, Drag Me to Hell, and more. Since the cabin didn't have an actual cellar, a hole had to be cut in the floor and a shallow hole was dug. We see the actors in three separate places during the sequences where they descend into the cellar. The first is, of course, the cabin in Tennessee. The second is the cellar of a farmhouse owned by Robert Tappert's family in Michigan, and Sam Raimi's garage. In the cellar of the cabin, there's a ripped poster of Wes Craven's 1977 The Hills Have Eyes. Another nod to a separate horror movie are the bones and gourds, seen hanging in the shed. This is an homage to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The essential tape recorder actually belonged to Bruce Campbell's father. Bob Dorian, host of American Movie Classics, lent his voice for the professor on the tape. If you listen closely to the tape when it's played, you can hear Sam and Rob, followed by words that seem to be in Latin. Translated, the sentence says, Sam and Rob are the hikers on the road, which tells us that Sam Raimi and Rob Tappert were quite literally the two men standing by the road waving at the group. The creepy wind heard in the film was captured by Sam Raimi while he was staying in a hotel during filming. He woke up hearing it through his bedroom window and grabbed his sound equipment to capture the howling, deciding it would fit perfectly in his movie. He has said that some other films have sampled the same howling wind he recorded. During the scene after Cheryl is attacked in the woods, where she says that she wants to leave, you can see Scott appear to try to say something, but he stops and throws his head back before leaving frame. This is because Richard de Manincourt messed up his line. When Ash stops near the bridge, you probably notice that the angle seems a bit off. That's because the car was parked on an incline, and the camera was tilted to match it so the car looked like it was on flat ground. This way, it appears as though Ash is walking on tilted ground, in order to make the scene more eerie and off-putting. The contacts that the actors wore during their possession covered half of their eyes and had to be taken out frequently because they were quite painful. The odd white liquid that spills out of the possessed characters alongside blood is 2% milk. The reason this was used was to achieve two things. To show that those possessed weren't normal, and to attempt to keep the film from getting an X rating from the MPAA. In order to get the sounds of mutilated flesh, dead chickens were stabbed. The scream from Scott after his line, Don't you see, Ash? They're alive, isn't Richard Manincore. It's actually Sam Raimi's voice dubbed in. Possessed Linda's look was originally supposed to be more snake-like. A glimpse of this can actually be seen when Ash is dragging her out of the cabin. However, the decision was made to change her look to a more evil doll style. During the scene where Ash is preparing to dismember Linda, Campbell is using a real, functioning chainsaw. And you can tell just how uneasy Betsy Baker is, because you can clearly see her pulse racing. When Linda tries to stab Ash with the dagger, Betsy Baker is pretty much blind because of the contacts she had to wear. The little game that Ash plays with Linda involving him pretending to be asleep before giving her the necklace is repeated in a way. While Ash attempts to bury dead-eyed Linda, she peeks at him while pretending to be dead. Both the wood Ash uses to hit Linda with and the pieces that fall from the bridge were made from foam and were recycled from a previous Raimi film, It's Murder. 
Sometimes real injuries are placed in the final cut of movies, and The Evil Dead is certainly no different. A notable incident is during the scene where Deadite Cheryl's hands come through the cabin floor and grab Ash's face. If you pay attention, you'll notice real blood running down Bruce Campbell's head. This gash was caused by the blind grab from Ted Raimi under the floor. The scene in which Ash is in the cellar and blood is dripping down the projector is actually a nod to Andy Granger, a friend of Raimi and Campbell. He told them, no matter what you do, keep the blood running down the screen. During the scene near the climax of the movie when Ash fires a shot at the deadite through the window, Bruce Campbell actually shot a dummy to make it look as realistic as possible. If you've ever wondered what happened to the shotgun, you'll be pleased to know that it resides in Bruce Campbell's brother, Don Campbell's home. During the time of filming after principal photography, a majority of the main actors had returned home. That means that aside from Bruce Campbell, the people in demon makeup that we see in later portions of the film are stand-ins. Whether you know it or not, Ted Raimi often served as a stand-in when actors were busy or not present on set. During the climax, when Ash grabs the necklace he'd given Linda, the chain is laid in the shape of a skull. The ending of the film where Ash is attacked by the forces in the woods was achieved by mounting a camera to a tripod which was mounted to a motorcycle. That motorcycle was then driven through the cabin and quite literally into Bruce Campbell, who sustained broken ribs from the stunt. The Evil Dead wasn't actually Sam Raimi's first feature. That title goes to Within the Woods, as he had shot the short film as a way to raise money for The Evil Dead. With it, he was able to raise $90,000. The movie was originally called Book of the Dead, but producer Irvin Shapiro changed it to The Evil Dead because he was afraid that a reference to a book would deter the young audience. According to Betsy Baker, she was highly suspicious about being asked to star in a horror movie, so much so that she would only meet with the producers in a public restaurant. The movie was originally supposed to be shot in Michigan, but the crew couldn't find a suitable cabin. So they went to Tennessee and still had trouble finding a cabin that would work. However, they finally found one that wasn't too far from the house they had moved into for the production. The problem was this cabin was abandoned and practically falling apart with rooms full of horse manure. Along with being cleaned out, a telephone and electricity had to be installed for it to serve its purpose. Ironically, during filming at the bridge, the crew got lost on the first day of filming. The characters were originally going to be smoking weed during the scene where they're listening to the tape player, but the scene had to be reshot because the actors were indeed smoking real marijuana and couldn't stick to what they were supposed to do. If a certain level of desperation and grittiness comes through on screen, it's likely from the real conditions the cast and crew had to deal with. There were approximately 13 people in the group who had to share close sleeping space, and there was no plumbing in the cabin. Because of the freezing temperatures, they actually started burning the furniture in order to stay warm and thaw the equipment near the end of filming. Among other injuries that were sustained by Bruce Campbell, a cameraman slipped and slammed the camera against Campbell's face, which knocked out many of his teeth. The blood we see throughout the film is a mix of non-dairy creamer, caro syrup, and red food coloring. Apparently, after Bruce Campbell's shirt was drenched in it and dried by the fire, it literally broke when he attempted to put it on again. Not only that, but when it was time for him to go home, he would ride in the back of a pickup due to being covered in the sticky substance. There was originally supposed to be a slight alteration of the ending of the film, where Ash uses Linda's necklace to magnify sunlight to burn the Necronomicon. The original runtime for the film was about 117 minutes, and focused more on the tragedy of Ash losing his friends one by one, and his guilt for not being able to save them, as well as the terror that was present. Many people put a lot of effort into creating The Evil Dead. By the winter of 1980, funds had essentially run out, but Raimi, Campbell, and Tappert borrowed money from family and friends. 
took out bank loans, and to call businesses in Michigan which allowed them to get more necessities. Bruce Campbell would actually help set up shots when he wasn't in front of the camera. He also used his family's North Michigan property as collateral to help Sam Raimi finish the film and make it 35mm as a requirement for theatrical release. Because of all of this, Raimi gave him a co-producer credit to show his gratitude. Blood donor stations gave out free tickets to the premiere screening of the film, as well as pins that said, I bled for the evil dead, to donors. Robert Tappert has jokingly said that it was their way of giving blood back to the community. Raimi took a page from the great William Castle's book by having ambulances stand by outside during the premiere of the film as a publicity stunt. It was one of the very first movies in the UK to be banned and labeled as a video nasty. There's a long list of horror movies that are banned in foreign countries. The Evil Dead has been on quite a few. However, Germany gave the movie a rather rough time. An uncut version wasn't legally allowed until as recently as July of 2016. It was never officially released in Hungary, however, but it is possible for you to find it on the black market under the title The Spirit of the Woods. Despite the many challenges the cast and crew faced to make The Evil Dead, it became one of the highest rated video rentals of 1981. At the end of the shooting of the film, the crew created a time capsule that they buried in the fireplace of the cabin. Bruce Campbell has confirmed that the capsule is real and that it contains a piece of gaffer's tape, a burnt light bulb, a piece of faux beam he used to whack Linda with, and the code to the visual meaning of the film. It's unclear as to whether or not someone has found it, but the cabin itself was destroyed, leaving only the fireplace. So those were some facts about the Evil Dead you may not have known. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like to let me know. And don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me what other horror movies you'd like to see me dig up some facts about. Also, don't forget to share this video to help the channel grow and subscribe for more videos like this. See you later.